Hello, Namaste. This is Dr. Ravi Kiran Varigala. I'm an infectious disease specialist at Apollo Hospital, Jubilee Hills. And I will be talking today about measles. What are the common symptoms, signs, diagnosis and treatment options for measles infection? Thank you. So measles is a viral infection which is caused by the virus measles as you can see the name. So measles is an infection which usually affects children. It can also affect other people also. It's not as common these days but it could be mistaken for something else which is very common. So a lot of people are searching for this these days uh, because they are afraid that they could be getting measles. But measles actually is very uncommon in this day and age especially in India because most of us are vaccinated in India. So the measles is something that is spread by one person to another if you are very close to them. It is spread through the air usually and when we inhale and it, the measles virus gets into the body and it can uh, start having different symptoms. So the most common thing that we see before even we start seeing much of the symptoms, there is some uh, like a spot that comes inside their mouth. We call it a couplic spots. Uh, most people might miss it because it's actually inside the mouth who looks inside the mouth but if you really observe inside the mouth then you can find the spot first and then later on you start having a rash so it's more what you call as a maculopapular rash which is like a reddish rash like a spottish type of rash all over the body it might start in the trunk and it then spreads to different parts of the body to your arms to your legs face all over the body it might spread it doesn't cause any like pimples type of thing it doesn't like cause pus but just uh, some bumps it might cause or just a flat red rash it might cause uh, you can have fevers fever could be very high also up to one or three or one or four degrees you'll be very weak and especially as it affects children they become very irritable they may not eat very well they might be crying more they may want to sleep a lot more sometimes they may have some vomitings diarrhea if it becomes more serious, it might lead to other complications depending upon what organ it is affecting. So some of the risk factors that we see are first thing, if you're getting measles, you were probably not vaccinated with measles as a child. So at least in most national programs all across the world, measles is part of the national immunization programs. Like in India, they give it uh, in childhood. I think when you're nine months of age, then you give the measles vaccines. You give two doses of measles vaccines, at least 28 days apart. If you get that vaccine, you are pretty much immune from measles for a long, long time. The other thing that happens is some people do not get vaccinated for whatever reasons. Either they forgot the vaccine or they don't think it is needed or they never knew that vaccine was required to begin with. Uh, some of the reasons when they vaccination is missed and they are exposed to a person who has measles at that time then they can also develop measles there's another form of measles also which develops in older adults so when we get the vaccine the protection lasts for about 20 30 years or so but as we start aging our immunity starts going down and as our immunity starts going down we may not be able to fight the infection based upon the vaccine which was given as a child. So over the years our immunity starts going slowly down. So that's why we also recommend at least in the immunocompromised adults to give a booster dose of the vaccine as an adult that might lift up your uh, um, antibody levels and then you can fight the infection better. Other infections can also do this, but measles, the antibody levels will start going down as we age, especially after 20 years of age. Main mode of prevention really is the vaccine that I just mentioned about. Vaccine is very, very safe and very effective. Do not believe any rumors about the vaccination. Just take the vaccine, give it to your children and it will really, really be effective. The other way is to avoid contact with people who have measles. If somebody is confirmed to have measles, then just stay away from them. They need to be in a completely separate room, in an isolation room by themselves. Just like what we do for like COVID, right? So put them in a separate room. All the staff, even family members, if they're caring for them, they need to wear appropriate precautions, masks, gloves, face shield, so that we don't infect ourselves. So the measles, 
once you get the measles there's like an incubation period where you won't have any symptoms it's like a prodromal symptoms stage where you will have the infection but not have any symptoms that can last for a few days after probably five days or so you might have starting symptoms so there are several symptoms as i mentioned uh, fever you could have a rash you could even have cough nausea vomiting diarrhea uh, even drowsiness and if it affects other parts of the body based on the part of the body is affected like lungs could be affected brain could be affected uh, diarrhea may be more severe, body pains, weakness, all of those could be there. You are most infectious actually, uh, even before you have all these symptoms. So that's why many times the measles is missed. So by the time the symptoms have come in, you may have already transmitted the virus to several other people. So typically one family member gets it and then gives it to several other people. Or like children, as I mentioned, might get it. They go to school or a daycare and then they can transmit it to other people in the daycare or in the school and several others will get infected through that. The treatment for measles is mainly symptomatic. There is no specific treatment in most of the cases or it is not necessarily needed. It is a self-contained type of virus and illness. Um, most people will get better without a specific treatment. So what is commonly required is only good nutrition, fluids, if they are not eating, they might require IV fluids. For fever, you might require medications to bring down the temperature, just like paracetamol or other medications to bring them temperatures down, even cold, sponging. If they have a lot of itching or irritation of the skin, you might need some medicines to decrease the itching. And if they are having some nausea and vomiting, maybe medications to prevent vomiting. Same things for diarrhea. If lungs or brain get affected, then you might need medications to support those. So mainly it is supportive. There are some other treatments. There's a medicine called ribavarin. It's an antiviral medicine and that could be helpful. There are lots of other investigational therapies that are coming out. None of them have been specifically approved yet for measles. So we don't really use that. If somebody is really serious, we might use ribavarin at this point. Stay informed, stay safe. Always consult your doctor for accurate medical advice and information about any of these treatment options. Thank you. Namaste.